Hello everyone and welcome to the next best of three of the second Intel Extreme Masters season. We're back in group B for the second play day. And once again, we're seeing an undead versus human on Turtle Rock. Uh, so far, I think we've seen this three times already in the rather short uh, period of time that um, we've uh, been in this tournament. Uh, Hooligan against Hasuops, Hooligan against Elqua and Fire against Dovak, unless I'm missing one. And all three of them have been pretty exciting. Long games, counter expansions, uh, high hero levels and a human coming out on top in the end. So let's yeah. see if this is going to go equally. Um, this time it is Protoys, the German undead. We do see him for the first time here in this tournament. He did get basically a death win against Sase on playday number one, Sase having um, an injury, was not able to uh, participate basically on the first playday. There were two maps against Protoys, which both lasted like 30 seconds. And then Sase left voluntarily. Uh, yeah, he at this point was one of the best German players, probably the best German online player as he was able to win the online EPS seasons, but then on LAN, he wasn't really able to translate that uh, skill too well, and usually on LAN, he uh, yeah, didn't up, uh, didn't end up winning. But this is online, so this is definitely his strong suit. And Kemper is his opponent down here in the bottom in light blue. AM first, by the way, against DK and the Ghoul build by Protoys. Uh, yeah, Kemper did get... The rape of the tournament so far in his first map against Ciara and nevertheless ended up winning the best of three, turning it around, winning 2-1. to one. And yeah, this time against Protoys, we'll see how well he's going to be able to do. AM is out, I guess the Turtles are going to get it first. Death Knight is out as well, getting the rot quickly. And Protoys at 20 out of 20, adding another ghoul and heading across the map to harass. Ghoul is there as well to uh, maybe win a bit of time. DK is already at the shop, but the turtle, is he gonna be there in time? The answer is maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's really, really getting there, and I guess he's getting the last hit here already. A huge blunder, actually, by Kemper to not be able to finish this creep cam in time, and he's too late with the deny as well. So Proto is getting some nice XP here early on. Kemper. Yeah, this did not go according to plan. He super greedily crept this without any militia support and he's really paying the price for it. I mean, he's got a lot of lumber here thus far, but yeah, getting not getting that XP, giving that away to his opponent in the beginning is, that's not the start you really want to have happen here. And he's tacking. All right, so for the first time here, we're going to see a human not going for a fast expansion against an undead. Um, so I imagine we're gonna see him play Rifleman and Caster eventually, but maybe he's got a surprise for us up his sleeve. Proto is even spending a coil here to get uh, the last hit onto the level 1 Hatchling. And the Ghoul is moving out of the base already. Kemper is taking quite a bit of damage on the first Footman here. Is he gonna get that one out alive? The coil says no. And uh, the DK is already close to level 2. Let's see, he, let's see who gets the last hit here. This Kemper. Protoss gets the item though. Medal of Intelligence. Uh, Cloak was found at the bottom of the map in front of uh, Kemper's main. The Ghoul is getting coiled. And the Water Metal is going down. Securing level 2 already for the DK. Way before the AM can get there. Two Ghouls. Pretty low. This one might... No, he's not going down. And Kemper... Yeah, forced to retreat at least a little bit away from Protoys' main base. The DK is out of mana for the moment. Is he gonna get the next coil? He doesn't even need to because the next ghoul is being pulled out in a nice surround against the next uh, footman, even keeping it close here as the skeleton expires and this guy can be put back into the main. Again, Protoys with some very nice micro here. Early on, doesn't really have a lot of steam anymore though. <laughs> but then again, he, I don't think he really needs it because the AM, he's out of mana as well and the last water metal is already halfway gone. And uh, when I say Protoss doesn't have a lot of steam, I mean the majority of his ghouls are pretty low on HP and therefore he doesn't really have a lot to uh, fight with here anymore. But then again, he did, he did incredibly well here early on, killing a bunch of footmen, getting a decent XP lead and yeah, Blacksmith is coming right now. So Kemper is gonna go into Rifleman casters and 
Proteus. Yeah, we're gonna see what he's gonna do against it. I'm assuming tier 3 and maybe one Slaughterhouse, maybe even double Slaughterhouse with um, Destroyer's Abominations. And yeah, with, with this early game, uh, Kemper has got some catching up to do because ideally you'd like to have that AM on level 3 to be able to creep up the Mountain King nicely, to be able to um, play aggressively on tier 2, you know, when you get the Rifleman and the Casters and when the Undead isn't up to tier 3 yet, doesn't have an Orb yet, etc. But this isn't looking like uh, an approach that's going to be too easy to execute for a camper in this position. Proto is also getting the Cannibalize upgrade, not seen too often, but yeah, as he's creeping, um, simultaneously with his ghouls while harassing with the DK here. This turns out to be quite useful and he's not forced to spend any coils here in order to uh, keep his ghouls alive or at least to in order to regenerate his ghouls. And he's there again but the coil is coming too early but he's getting the last hit anyway and still no level 2 for Kempo who found the claws of attack here. But uh, this one after the coil should have gone to Kemper reacted way too late there. And Protoys is continuing the domination here. So far, the AM is he going to the shop? He's waking up the creeps, some ensnares perhaps on these ghouls. The one trapper should. Wow, he doesn't even uh, throw the net here on any of the units. Lich is out as well. The next footman is gonna fall here. The DK with the aura should easily be able to escape this. As soon as the Mountain King comes, he's gonna have to be a little bit more careful. But yeah, he's heading back into his own base. He's going double slaughterhouse. He's going instant tier 3. Whereas uh, Kemper is getting one arcane sanctum here. So he's going for the expected rifleman caster. And uh, yeah, 32 supply currently against 33. I mean, uh, Kemper, of course, or the, the human in general, investing a lot more into the army there early on. He's going to go for the big tier 2 army. Whereas uh, Protoss is investing into the quick tier 3 tech. He's investing into double slaughterhouse and therefore having somewhat about equal supply here is not a good sign for Kemper. Is Protoys finally gonna lose his first unit here? I don't think he's lost the ghoul so far, but this one is going to fall. So uh, finally a bit of a success there for Kemper, who's got his AM finally slightly over level two. Second ghoul is falling, and now, yeah, with the Watermans, with the first rifleman, uh, sniping out these ghouls is gonna get um, a lot easier for the humans, so it's gonna get a little bit more tricky for Protoys to actually engage. He's sending his ghouls back as well, just keeping his heroes around to do some coil and nova action. There are soon to be 125 mana on the Lich, there are soon to be 150 on the DK, so two coils, one nova. And let's see what he's going for. Perhaps the one Rifleman who's taking a bit of unnecessary damage, but actually he's first finishing the one Trapper here. This one is going to uh, Kemper the Coil, coming a tiny bit too early, and I guess the Mountain King is probably going to make sure that this guy is going to Kemper, and he is, but the uh, Ward is going to Protoys and the Priap of Vitality as well. So another setback here for Kemper. Protoys with the first two statues out, he's getting Destroyer upgrade, and Kemper, as I said, you want to, at this stage of the game, you want to creep, creep aggressively, you want to make use of this you know, for the moment, superior army composition that you've got. And uh, Kemper is doing just that, but he could get so much more out of this if his early game had been better. So let's see how far, or let's see how much he can make happen here before his, uh, before Protoys' tech is ready, before he's getting the orb and destroyers and everything. I was about to say, let's see how far ahead he's gonna be able to get here, but I'm not really sure if that was the, if that would have been the correct phrase. Will Frenzy has finished for uh, Protoss, as we can see. Destroyer is soon to finish. Uh, it's really He doesn't want to co go back even to get the orb, even though it makes such a huge difference. There is one more slow on that sorceress. The ghouls are being pulled right now. So it looks like even without the orb of corruption, he's willing to commit here. Is he getting the Crypt Lord? Yes, he's getting the Crypt Lord. So no Tavern Hero. And that's the reason why he's not heading back, because I'm assuming... Okay, never mind. I was about to say I'm assuming he's gonna wanna pick up the orb with his Crypt Lord, but he's not doing so. Quickly charging in here with the ghouls, getting the level up on his DK. Paying with one of the ghouls for it, but that's worth it. First destroyer is being morphed, and Proto is charging forward here with the Impale, dealing, yeah, some great damage against the first rifleman here. That one's gonna be picked off. The first uh, ghoul is falling as well, and as you can see, the damage output against these ghouls is pretty good. But Proto is micro on point so far. The next ghoul is falling. The next Impale is hitting nicely. Uh, militia are coming in. The one destroyer is out of mana already. 
He does have actually the resource to morph a second one, decides not to do so. So far another um, priest gets sniped out and actually this fight isn't going all too bad for Camper Protoss, I think. A little bit over eager here to fight already without the orb, with only one destroyer against the militia. There is the town portal passed onto the lich, so uh, he's got level 2 right now, but it looks like he's gonna be forced to use that eventually. Coil goes onto the lich, the next sorceress is being sniped out. And uh, I guess eventually Protoss might be forced out of this fight. He's doing the best he can here. The DK is now out of mana though. The destroyer, he's got actually no goose remaining. He's only micring with his three units with the one elimination, one destroyer, one statue. But it looks like he still is looking fine in this fight as the militia duration has run out by now. And Kemper only has two riflemen remaining, three riflemen and his two heroes. And uh, granted, the Mountain King still has mana, but the level 1 bolt isn't doing all too much yet. The destroyer is being micro back nicely. And Protoss is able to get one kill after another despite not having the orb. The one statue is finally killed, but the two illuminations are doing nicely as well. The Death Knight is now getting stuck. He's got the Invo Potion still. Can he use it in time or is there a bash coming perhaps? No, there isn't. Nova is securing this Death Knight's way out, or is it? I think he's gonna have to pass the Town Portal back, which he's doing right now. He clicks the Mountain King, sees that there is mana for a bolt now again, and Micros just on point uses the Town Portal to dodge the bolt. And at the end of the day, Protoss is forced to Town Portal out. He's traded his Goose at the end of the day decently, I'd say. Not incredibly well, but decently. And the problem now for, or the problem with this strat for Camper is gonna be that he's relying on getting that strong timing. Another click on the AM here as he's walked past the Watcher Ward. Sees that, okay, TP still, but no other items. Uh, the problem for Camper is that he's going for this strong mid-game army. And now he is going to be able to reinforce casters and... Rifleman, whereas there's the orb by the way, finally for Protoss. I think that fight would have gone so much better with the orb, but I guess he somehow didn't have the patience to quickly wait with the Crypt Lord to get the 375 gold. Um, and Protoss is going to be able to reinforce his army with abominations, statues, eventual destroyers, and those are just able to trade so much better than... Um, than uh, Kemper's army and what I'm trying to get at here is that at this previous stage of the game that we've just been in trading somewhat equally is not what the human player can really allow himself to do now getting the crystal ball on top of this at least getting some decent XP here but yeah not the item he was hoping for MK is gonna be level 3 AM uh, is even going back here and Protoys at the same time, almost level 4 DK, almost level 3 Lich, and level 2.5 Crypt already. So these heroes are looking phenomenal. Let's see what the Death Knight is going to eventually skill uh, once he reaches um, level 4, level 3 now on the Lich. Protoys at 50 supply, spending a lot of gold on these items right now. One of Mana Stealing has been found. Um, Tasman of Evasion on the Crypt Lord. Big Heal Potion on the Death Knight. He's looking fine so far and Kemper yeah what's what's the plan here for Kemper that's the question because protest he can just sit back he you know if if he's getting the chance to do so he's just gonna go for a big AD supply fight and use his superiorly tech army superiorly leveled heroes whereas the pressure is somewhat on Kemper who uh, yeah did he sell that crystal ball, yes he did, TP on the AM as well as a heal scroll, another heal scroll on the MK, so he has a bit of, you know, healing to work against the AOE of the undead, speaking of the undead, level 4 has been reached and he's got level 1 unholy aura, so he's got death pack, level 3 on the crypto as well, he's looking pretty fine here, and is he willing to fight here already, he spent a lot of gold on items as I mentioned previously, it's 58 against 59 supply, the clap really lasting a long time here, bolt on the, the abomination, he's taking a lot of damage on the major or on many of his units, and therefore he's the one town pointing out, doesn't want to start this fight with his whole army on like half HP. Got a bit of AoE in, and he's gonna find that this camp has been taken already, let's just quickly see what Proto has found here, oh yeah, it's the Warsong Battle Drum, so that's not gonna hurt him as well. And he's immediately continuing to creep as it looks like here. So not wasting any time. He knows that at this side of the map, the only really valuable camp that is still there is this one. Whereas 
close to his own main base. There is still this one as well, so he continues creeping. Camper, yeah, doing the best here he can, I think, which is take that one remaining valuable camp. MK, yeah, slowly getting closer to level uh, 4. He found the big mana potion here previously, which is also not bad. Lich level 4 right now, what did he find here? Claws plus 9, I guess the Lich is gonna get that one eventually. 3 statues for um, Protoys, 62 supply for him, 64 for Kemper, so... Yeah, this is... We're slowly getting into the perfect supply range for... Or from uh, Protoys' point of view. Ah, okay, got a ghoul here, just to make sure not to miss anything. Yeah, Camper actually got this camp to take as well. Was quite far away from it previously, but yeah, of course, once he takes this, I guess it makes sense to continue moving across the map. Creep this one as well. At the shop, he's getting... What's he getting? Nothing yet. We'll keep an eye on it. And... What did he find here? Lionhorn of Stormwind. So, four and a half, four, three and a half against three, four? Yeah, three and four and a half. He wants to have that powerful MK. The AM against a few destroyers really doesn't contribute all too much anymore. Two, two destroyers. He needs some against the slow and against the water elemental. One zero attack upgrade by the one on the rifles. One one on the illuminations. No upgrades on the destroyers yet. Heal uh, tome and big heal potion. Two big heal potions right now. So hero focus is going to be a bit of a yeah difficult uh, endeavor for Kemper. So yeah, the map is mostly crept except for some small orange and green camps. And now it's 70 supply against 68. Uh, heal potion on the Mountain King, no heal potion on the AM. This is actually, this could be a pretty great position for Kemper actually with this small joke here. The Abomination's charging forward nevertheless, first slow has been dispelled already. Clap is coming in by the Mountain King. I think Blizzard would do amazing work right now, but he doesn't have it. And Protoss is the one forced to go back. This is actually the worst position possible for Protoss that I can imagine. Yeah, he's falling back a little bit. Fighting out in the open would be a lot better for him. The Mountain King up front needs to be a little bit careful here. Impel is going in against the Rifleman. The first Illuminations are taking a lot of damage here to begin with. One of the big heal potions has been passed on to the uh, Crypt Lord. The Mountain King is chasing after the DK. Big heal potion had to be used already. The next Impel is doing a sick job against these Rifleman, hitting all of them. The Nova is coming in, and now the <laughs> yeah, now the Illuminations do have the surface area that they want to have, and immediately Camper is forced to use the Town Pole Loud at the end. Yeah, this fight turned out to be great for Protoys, despite the, the initial position being so good for Kemper, but so much meat shield for Protoys, he's even sacking an Abomination here, the Lich back to full mana, and uh, mana potion used by the Mountain King as well, or was it just a Clarity? I think it must have been a Clarity because he was on rather little um, mana there, and uh, yeah, now... With the mana potion, Clap is coming in, Inbu potion used by the Mountain King, he's using a lot of gold here to keep that one alive, but the AM is actually the target here, Bolt goes on the Death Knight, he does have Death Pack, keep that in mind, and he's using it on one of the Abominations, back to full HP, now both of the human heroes are somewhat low, heal potion used by the AM, level 5 DK, and the Abomination fighting back there against the Mountain King, Protoss has actually lost a few units, but he's still... Yeah, his army is still looking so superior, level 5 on the Lich right now as well, and... Um, Kemper is fighting with, literally, with his back against the wall here. Three abominations, a destroyer, two statues still. A uh, bit of mana to work with still for Protoss. Next Nova is coming in against the AM. Even a call to arms used, so all the units are out right now. But the militia, at this state of the game, not really contributing all too much. GG, as Kemper was down to like 24 out of... Uh, 24 against like still low upkeep. And Protoss takes the first map here, Kemper with a terrible early game. Protoss getting way ahead XP-wise, getting a lot of footmen picked off for free. Um, Kemper went for the long game, and I mean, I mean, what else was he supposed to do at that point? A lot of creeping done on both sides. Protoss got his tier 3 unit composition that he wants to get going, and uh, that's just a problem with the rifler caster strategy. If you go into a late game, against a well tacked triple hero, nicely leveled, etc. undead, without um, an advantage, then it's just so hard to get a good, sustainable late game fight. You know, you, know, you need the heal scrolls, you need so many units in the good position, which is 
um, which is somewhat narrow while also enables the human to still kite back with his units and uh, he, he got a somewhat okay position but still it wasn't enough for him to uh, take the fight there in the end on top of it of course like protoist got uh, got the uh, command aura and uh, you know um, Kemper got the crystal ball at the biggest camp of the map so that didn't help as well but uh, yeah protoist just playing superiorly here especially in the early game and I think if he hadn't taken that fight as quickly close to his own natural expansion without the orb yet um, then he would have won it even more clearly even more early on but uh, it still was easily enough even though he took that fight and therefore he's leading 1-0 and therefore we're going to see Echo Isles as map number two.